For many years, I've had a lot of autoimmune issues that have shown up for me starting in my 20s. Uh, I started with food allergies, many, many food allergies. Um, it got to the point that it became really painful just to drink water um, and my body would swell up. And over the years, my symptoms just continued to progress uh, where I had disfiguring facial swelling, rashes, rainods. Um, my rheumatologist uh, said that I presented symptoms of every autoimmune disease there was, but the only one that they could diagnose me with was Hashimoto's. And I was just this mystery person. They couldn't really figure me out. So in August of last year, my sister uh, brought to my attention uh, and a friend of mine also uh, breast implant illness. And I thought, oh my gosh, this could be it. So I get on this Facebook group and there's all these women that have similar symptoms as me. And I chose to explant in August. So I had the breast implants removed. And while over time, as my body detoxed, those were definitely a physical stress to my body with all of the chemicals that were in there. Um, many of my symptoms went away, but the one thing that I so wanted, I shouldn't say the one thing, but one of the many things that I wanted to go away were my food intolerances. So foods that would be healthy to other people like coconut or turmeric um, were like poison to me. I had a blood analysis test done uh, showing all the foods that caused autoimmune reactions and even lettuce. <laughs> I couldn't have lettuce, avocado, cherries, I mean the list, it was so long, um, I couldn't have any grains and I tried every diet from paleo to vegan. And my biggest joke with all my friends and clients were, I'm the unhealthiest, healthiest person you've ever met and I should be in a bubble. Well, I should have been more mindful of what I was saying. So anyway, but, but the food allergies, um, I'm assuming because of the antibiotics after my surgery, they actually became worse. And the very few foods that I was able to eat, um, I no longer could even eat those. And a friend of mine talked to me about a heart-brain coherence course and said that you know it's helped a lot of people with autoimmune issues and food allergies and so I decided to take this course and um, once I applied what I had learned in this course I was able to reverse all of my many many food allergies overnight and in this course um, the gal that teaches it she was mentioning the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton and I was like wow I know those guys, like I have their books. I have a love of books. I don't watch television, I haven't for years, but I love to learn, I love to expand my mind, I love self-development, spirituality, science. And so I took such a deep dive into Dr. Joe's work and I would go to bed at night listening to videos. Um, as I'm waking up in the middle of the night, I'm still listening, I had it on YouTube and it was just playing continuously. And when I would take a shower, I'm propping up my phone in the shower and I'm like listening literally all day long while I'm getting ready in between clients every chance I could. And before I started doing his work, I just thought, I just want to submerge myself in this. I just, something told me, just keep listening to this. It's like my inner being knew this is true. Just keep taking it in, keep listening to it. And I have just submerged myself in it so much that now I can intelligently speak about it. And I know I created new neural pathways because of that. Um, but once I, I realized, I was like, wow, if I have 60, 70,000 thoughts per day, um, this course I had taken recommended using only an hour a day of your time to have that heart brain coherence. I was like, no way, that's like going to church on Sunday and just acting however you want to during the week. I'm like, no, I wanna become this. So I started all my sentences out with, I'm so happy and grateful that. So even if it's a bad day, you know, I'm so happy and grateful that I've got all 10 of my fingers, I've got all 10 of my toes, and <clears throat> even, um, you know, I don't like the veins in my legs, but you know, even though I'm so happy and grateful I have two strong walking legs that get me to where I'm going, literally everywhere I looked, I'm so happy and grateful I live in a beautiful, safe environment. I have clean water to drink. Started blessing the water as I'm taking a shower, thanking it for cleaning my body. Just everything that I could to raise my frequency. And those symptoms just kept continuing to dissolve and get better and better and better. I can eat everything. Can you believe that? I can eat everything. I have no limitations anymore. And what I did is, um, even in my healing process was, you know, my old language was, oh, I have autoimmune disease and oh, I have these food allergies. And what I felt was anxiety around my food. I felt that food was the enemy. I, you know, I had so much anxiety and embarrassment too, because I didn't know how my body was going to react. 
And uh, what I did was I held on to feel so much feeling of love and gratitude opening up that heart center because I know that every word, thought, and feeling leaves that electromagnetic signature onto every cell in the body. And for me, I went back to the times of when I first held my children in my arms, you know, holding on to that love to the point that I just had tears streaming down my face. And then I used visualization techniques. Um, I know that the limbic brain doesn't know the difference between past, present, or future, so I told myself I was five years old. And I went back to a time where um, sloppy joes were my favorite food when I was little. So I said, I'm five years old and I'm eating sloppy joes. And I could see my mother in the kitchen. I could hear my siblings, using all my senses, in the back room. I could smell the smell of the sloppy joes. And I held that bread up to my mouth, that sandwich, and I was feeling the sensation of, of you know, taking a bite into it and what it tasted like. And I was having such a feeling of joy and just feeling of carefree. And, and I envisioned my intestines, instead of being a disaster, out of all the work I ever did and all the money I spent on trying to heal myself, I envisioned it being perfectly healthy. And I said, food is my friend, and my stomach can you know, produce all the acids and enzymes it needs to digest anything that I choose, anything that I desire. And I just held on a feeling of so much gratitude. And so that, that was my process. And so, yeah, I don't have any, I'm, I'm over here eating bread, I can eat coconut, like corn, anything. I just wanted to also add that, <clears throat> you know, removing those breast implants definitely was a physical stress to my body, but the one thing I didn't address was the emotional stress. I, um, <laughs> I, I was molested as a small child. I ran away from home at 12 and I was raped. I uh, got into abusive relationships. Um, four and a half years ago, my daughter at the age of 22 fell five stories from her apartment building. Uh, she managed to survive that fall, but you can imagine the stress, um, taking that in as a mother and watching your child suffer in that way, uh, you know, what that did to me physically. And that's, you know, at the brink of when, you know, things got even extra bad for me also physically. Uh, so it's just really, it's so wonderful to be able to see the difference. Now that I know what I know, I, I can never go back to that old way of being. Once I understood the process, once I had, once I applied it, this is going to sound almost crazy, it worked immediately. <laughs> I think I just enveloped myself in it. I just thought, I can't just, I don't want to have a practice, like I have to become this. I just drank it in and I just became it fully. And I know that just sounds almost too good to be true, but that is how, you know, matter doesn't change matter. Energy changes matter. And believe me, I have spent tens of thousands of dollars on all kinds of blood work and saliva testing, stool testing, everything in the world you can imagine. Um, seeing all the specialists and, you know, it, I, it, it, when I chose to stop hiding behind the shadows of my story and being in that place of victimhood and reliving the traumas in my mind again and again and again, and I chose to create a new reality. And through, you know, any reality, that, there's multiple realities in all realities, you know, it's which lens are you going to choose to look through, even my daughter's accident. You know, we choose to, in the midst of tragedy, to focus on everything that went right instead of everything that went wrong. And she defied every odd. And, you know, just even using that technique, you know, we were told she may never walk again. Uh, she's probably going to have to have her right foot amputated. She would have to have a permanent colostomy bag, a permanent catheter. And I would not allow her to believe any of that. And I would even walk her through guided meditation after um, uh, her surgeries. And that actually helped her reduce her pain more than all the drugs that they had given her for pain. So I, it, it's, it's just amazing what energy can do.